1915 Congress of Women at The Hague. The year is 1915. World War I has been devastating the lives of soldiers, their families, and everyday citizens all over the world for almost a year now. With no obvious signs of a coming peace, the world is wondering, will this war ever end? Dr. Alida Jacobs, leader of a Dutch women's suffrage group, believed that by leading a series of conferences over a four-day period that she and 1,500 other women delegates from 13 different countries could put an end to World War I. The women developed a plan called the Wisconsin Plan. This plan called for a continuous period of mediation. Although their plan was later shut down by men, they still proved that women can make a difference too. To protest against war and to suggest steps which may lead to warfare becoming an impossibility is why Dr. Alita Jacobs said the Congress was assembled. Dr. Alita Jacobs was inspired by many different women's suffrage groups to host a Congress of Women. Being a women's suffrage group leader herself, she strongly believed that women could find a peaceful way to end the war rather than letting the war continue. Jacobs sent out invitations to many different women's suffrage organizations and important individuals all around the world inviting them to participate in the Congress at The Hague. These women usually met every other year in Berlin to discuss ways to end women's suffrage. This year, they were going to meet in the Netherlands, because of its neutral position in the war, to discuss the cause of peace. In order to participate in the Congress, you had to agree with two conditions. That international disputes should be settled by pacific means and that the parliamentary franchise should be extended to women. If you agreed with these two conditions, you were eligible to participate in the Congress. Some of the American delegates Jacobs invited to the Congress were Jane Addams and Emily G. Balk. Both were future recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize. Jane Addams was a co-founder of the Hall House, which acted as a welfare agency for families in need. She was also the president of the Congress. It is a supreme effort of heroism to rise into the feeling of internationalism without losing patriotism, said Jane Addams at the first conference. Emily G. Balk was a human rights activist and a sociologist who taught at Wellesley College. Another very important American delegate was Alice Hamilton. Alice Hamilton was a pathology professor and a medical investigator. She also later became the first female member of the faculty at Harvard University. Some of the other delegates Jacobs invited to the Congress were Mia Boisevin of Holland, Thora Doggart of Denmark, Crystal Macmillan of England, Emily Aronson of Norway, and Anna Kleeman of Sweden. Jacobs made sure to send out the invitations far in advance, for she knew that many of the women in the Congress would have difficulties traveling due to the fact that the world was at war. Many of the women had troubles traveling to The Hague. Emily G. Balk reported that the American delegates sailing on the Nordum were once stopped for four days before being able to proceed in their travels. We were held motionless for four mortal days, almost like prisoners of the war, said Balk. At least one female delegate from almost every warring country participated in the Congress, with the exception of the French, who were not able to attend due to traveling restrictions. Many women were very eager to be part of a Congress that, if successful, could make such a big difference. In the United Kingdom, over 180 women wanted to attend the Congress. They were stopped by the United Kingdom authorities, who said only some of the 180 women would be able to attend. The authorities were worried for the women's safety. They believed allowing a large group of women to travel during wartime could be very dangerous. Although the delegates believed they could find a peaceful way to end the war, they were also doubtful that the meetings would hold any importance. They were worried they would not be taken seriously because they were women, for up until that time, only men participated in national congresses. When I sailed on the Nordam in April with the 42 other American delegates to the International Congress of Women at The Hague, it looked doubtful to me, as it did to many others, how valuable the meeting could be made, said Balk. Despite her doubts, she also felt it was a great opportunity to participate in such a Congress. I felt, however, that even a shadow of chance to serve the cause of peace could not today be refused, said Balk. On April 28, 1915, the first conference was held. Jacob started out by welcoming all of the women attending. She expressed her gratitude for all of the brave women who took the risk of traveling during warring times. 
With mourning hearts, we stand united here. We grieve for many brave young men who have lost their lives on the battlefield before attaining their full manhood. We mourn with the poor mothers bereft of their sons, with the thousands of young widows and fatherless children, and we feel that we can no longer endure in this 20th century of civilization that government should tolerate brute force as the only solution of international disputes, expressed Jacobs. Although Jacob strongly believed in the women, she was also aware that they may not be successful in finding an end to the war. Although our efforts may not shorten the present war, there is no doubt that this pacific assemblage of so many nations will have its moral effect upon the belligerent countries, said Jacobs. The Congress had a very detailed schedule. They had to make the most of their time, for they only had four days to hold the conferences. According to the schedule, the committee meetings were to be held in the afternoons. During that time, the women were not allowed to discuss which countries were responsible for starting the present war. They were also not permitted to discuss starting future wars. If you were not presenting a resolution to the war, you were not allowed to speak for more than five minutes. The Congress came up with more than 20 resolutions. Two of the major resolutions called for protesting against the war and a proposal for peace and mediation. This proposal was called the Wisconsin Plan. The Wisconsin Plan was brought to the Congress by Julia Grace Wales. She was one of the many American delegates. Wales first presented the plan in a published pamphlet. The plan called for continuous mediation without armistice. This plan would be put into effect until the warring nations could return to peace. The Wisconsin plan appealed to the Congress because it was a non-violent resolution to the war. The Congress discussed how they would put the Wisconsin plan into action. They were going to visit the warring countries' capitals and discuss the benefits of the Wisconsin plan. They were going to explain how all of the countries would benefit from this plan because no more of their men would die. They could start to recover from the war right away, and there would be peace in the world again. On May 19th, Jane Addams, Alita Jacobs, Alice Hamilton, and Fra Wolfden began their journey to the war capitals. They first visited the Dutch capitals, being as they were already in the Netherlands. They continued from there. In total, they visited over 20 warring countries. Since some of the country's delegates cannot attend the meetings, such as the French, they were not alerted of the women's plan until after the women had already started their travels. Once the news of the compromise had spread to other countries, men had started taking down the idea of it. Some men wrote to the country's governments, asking that the women's journeys be shut down. Other groups of men protested against them. The governments heard the men's complaints and understood what the men were saying. Although they somewhat agreed with the men, they knew the women would not let all that they worked for be shut down in an instant. The government decided to let the women continue traveling to the war capitals. Although the women were allowed to present their ideas to the country's governments, that didn't mean the countries were going to listen to them. Most of the countries they visited resented their ideas for peace. They wanted to finish the war. They didn't want the war to go unfinished. Some countries didn't even let the women present their ideas to them. One of the main reasons the country's governments didn't listen to the women was because they believed that most of the men had been killed were killed by American soldiers. They didn't want any Americans to step foot in their country, not even if they were against the war. About 50% of the country's governments they visited supported them, and the other 50% did not support them. It was very difficult for the women to get through to the country's governments. After all of their traveling and hard work, they were finally told the Wisconsin plan was not going to put into effect. Despite their best efforts, it all came down to the fact that the countries did not want the war to go unfinished. They were not going to let that happen, for then, all of the money spent on the war, and more importantly, the lives lost would have been for nothing. It has been over 100 years since the Congress of Women assembled at The Hague in 1915. We are still affected today by the great accomplishments that the women in the Congress achieved. In fact, the Congress was renamed the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom in 1919 and are still in operation today. Although the brave women who took part in the 1915 Congress of Women at The Hague were not able to end or shorten World War I, they still made a great impact in history. They showed the world that women can make a difference too.